Welcome to the By Way of Commandment podcast, a podcast dedicated to the study of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the finer points of his doctrine. Join us as we study the gospel through the scriptures and standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Welcome back to the By Way of Commandment podcast, uh, another roadside edition. So I'm currently, um, I'm doing a number of things. I already mentioned that I'm kind of in the middle of the process of researching and writing a book. Um, we'll talk about that another time. But I'm also putting together um, some podcast episodes um, in a sequential fashion, a, a series of episodes that have to do with various principles of the gospel, doctrines related to uh, the priesthood, the temple, uh, revelation, and, and repentance, and so forth. Um, and I'm I'm a couple. Um, I'm using PowerPoint as my kind of main presentation tool for these, which is, as you've noticed, probably in the last couple of videos, I've used PowerPoint now a few times to create uh, what I think are maybe uh, better podcast episodes moving forward. So that's what I've been doing. And um, I wanted to share a couple thoughts, some things that I've been having, some thoughts I've been having as I've been putting together these PowerPoint presentations about the nature of the temple, um, the various ordinances related to the temple and, and the church, uh, the priesthood, etc. And uh, put it into a little bit of a bite-sized kind of package for uh, a quick little video today. So I wanted to share uh, a, a quote from Elder Bruce R. McConkie, and you know, those of you who have listened to this channel for any length of time know that I've mentioned certain aspects of Bruce R. McConkie's uh, books and, and teachings that I really agree with and others that I disagree with, um, particularly when it comes to his idea of the gathering of Israel and, and uh, the Latter-day Temple in Jerusalem and so forth. Um, but regardless of all that, I, I generally love... Uh, Elder Bruce R. McConkie. I think um, much of his work has been very impactful on me and, and, and others in the church as well. And so I wanted to share a quote from his. This is from one of his books called The Promised Messiah. And of, of course, I'll, I'll, put the, um, I'll put the source up here in the video and I'll, I'll probably put the actual quote up on the video screen as well so you don't have to look at my ugly mug. But this is what he says, and this is um, in some ways related to the last couple videos I've done about the nature of prophets, prophecy, the spirit of revelation, uh, the testimony of Jesus, um, and the blessings that one can expect to receive as a faithful disciple of Christ. Um, God is no respecter of persons. Uh, he loves each of us and wishes all of us to repent and, and come unto him. So this is from... Uh, the Promised Messiah. Bruce R. McConkie says, Few faithful people will stumble or feel disbelief at the doctrine here presented that the Lord's apostolic witnesses are entitled and expected to see the Lord's face, and that each one individually is obligated to call upon him in faith in mighty prayer until he prevails. But the twelve are only a dozen in number. There is seldom more than 15 men on earth at a time who have been ordained to the holy apostleship. Which brings, to, brings us to another statement made by Elder Cowdery in his apostolic charge. Quote, God does not love you any better or more than others. End quote. That is, apostles and, pos and prophets do not gain precedence with the Lord unless they earn it by personal righteousness. And here's an important statement. The Lord loves people, not office holders. Every elder is entitled to the same blessings and privileges offered to the apostles. Indeed, an apostle is an elder. The priesthood is greater than any of its offices. No office adds any power, dignity, or authority to the priesthood. All offices derive their rights virtues, authorities, and prerogatives from the priesthood. It is greater to hold the Melchizedek priesthood than it is to hold the office of an elder or apostle in that priesthood. 
The Lord loves his priesthood holders, all of whom are given the same opportunity to do good work and work righteousness and keep the commandments. All the elders in the kingdom are expected to live the law as strictly as do the council of the twelve. And if they do so, the same blessings will come to them that flow to the apostles and prophets. Uh, God is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter what your station is. It doesn't matter what your stewardship is. He expects us to work righteousness. He expects us to do good. He expects us to call upon his name in mighty prayer. He expects us to exercise faith unto repentance in the name of Christ. And all that to say that should we do so, we have every right to receive the same blessings and privileges that the apostles and prophets do. Now this doesn't mean at all that I'm saying, or that Bruce R. McConkie is saying, that we don't give special um, focus to or, or deference to those who hold offices and authority over us within the confines of the church. We talked about this with our episode about prophets and the spirit of prophecy, this idea of stewardship. I have, and you have, every right to receive the same blessings of the priesthood, blessings from our Father in Heaven, regardless of your station or calling in the church or, pri or priesthood. But we are still expected to serve within the organization of the church, within our own stewardships. But the Lord loves people, not office holders. That's an interesting way of putting it. Doctrine and Covenants, section 130, verses 20 and 21 state, There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of the world, upon which all blessings are predicated. And when we obtain any blessing from God, it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicated. As I've been studying about the temple, and I've been studying about the various concepts and aspects related to the temple and the temple endowment, the difference between the endowment of power and the presentation or ceremony of the endowment, and as I've been studying some of the concepts related to the temple in terms of names, clothing, signs, symbols, and so on, there's something that keeps coming back to me that I think is incredibly relevant to this uh, quote from Elder McConkie as well as the scriptures here in Doctrine and Covenants. And that is this. Placed before every man and woman on this earth, immediate and ever-present, is both a veil and an altar. At no point in history has God ever instituted the building of an altar without providing a veil. Both together are immediately present before us at all times. Sometimes those altars and veils are literal, physical, and sometimes they are metaphorical, but they are always real and they are always before us. And anytime we wish to call upon the Lord and receive a blessing from him and part that veil. We must offer the appropriate sacrifice. We must repent. We must exercise faith and come clean. And we must present ourselves to the Lord willing and able to serve him, to be obedient, to sacrifice whatever it is he requires of us, to consecrate our entire selves our whole lives to him in his service and the building up of his kingdom on the earth. And if we can do that, if we offer the appropriate sacrifices in that manner, the veil will part. We don't have to wait for some grand experience in our lives. We don't have to wait to go to the temple. We don't have to wait to 
partake in some special experience or event in order to repent, in order to exercise faith and, and to serve the Lord. In fact, often I think it's the little things that we do throughout our lives that show the Lord how much we really love him and how much we're willing to sacrifice our will for his. And those things accrue and build over time. And if we let it, it will change us. Or rather, I should say, he will change us. We will become new creatures in Christ. But if we remember that at every moment of our lives, whether literal or, metaphys or metaphorical, there is both an altar and a veil placed immediately before us. And we can, with the Lord's help, present the appropriate offerings, whatever he requires of us at any moment of our lives. And when we do so, he will part the veil on our behalf and we will receive those blessings from him. This, in my view, is the main theme or, or uh, principle behind the endowment. The whole point of the, the presentation of the endowment, the ceremony, is to teach us how we must live, the, and to enter the covenants that we make in the temple through those ordinances. We take that knowledge, that light and truth with us into our lives and we apply it so that we can learn how to approach the Lord and how to receive blessings from him and ultimately to receive the fullness of the priesthood or the fullness of the stature of God to be brought back in his presence someday, whether in this life or the next. But these blessings are available to us if we're willing to humble ourselves and repent and seek after them. I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, look forward to some more podcasts using uh, some, some better, more high-tech presentations via PowerPoint in the future. Um, and until next time, bye.